Hi, in this video, we are going to quickly see how to approach the question factors affecting cardiac output. So this video is just meant to give an outline of what all points you can write when such a question is asked. So this is usually asked as a short essay question like discuss the factors affecting cardiac output and add a note on B in which reflex. So you can start the answer by writing the definition of cardiac output. So cardiac output is a quantity of the blood that is pumped into the aorta each minute by the heart or in other words it is the output of the heart per unit time. So then the normal values of cardiac output can be written. So if a person is having a heart rate of say of about 72 per minute then the cardiac output will average around 5 liters per minute. So that is because cardiac output is stroke volume into heart rate. So if the stroke volume is 70 ml and heart rate is 72 then his cardiac output will be around 5 liters per minute. Now there is another term called cardiac index. So cardiac index is nothing but the output per minute per square meter of the body surface. So the same cardiac output per square meter is cardiac index and the normal value for that is 3.2 liters per minute per meter square. So both of these can be asked what is cardiac output and what is cardiac index. So after that introduction you can write about the factors affecting cardiac output. So we said that the cardiac output depends on the stroke volume and the heart rate. So naturally the factors that affect the cardiac output are factors that affect the stroke volume as well as factors that affect the heart rate. Okay. So first we will see about stroke volume. So the stroke volume depends mainly on three factors which are the preload, the afterload as well as the myocardial contractility. And there are factors which increase as well as decrease the heart rate. So in general these are the factors that affect the cardiac output. So we will see each one by one. So we will first see the factors affecting the stroke volume. So the first factor that affects the stroke volume is a preload. What is meant by preload? It is a load that acts on the muscle before contraction. So in case of the heart it is an end diastolic volume. right? So what happens if the end diastolic volume is more? So if there is an increase in diastolic volume, there will be an increased stretching of the muscle which means there will be an increase in length and when the length increases there will be increased contractility which in turn will lead to an increased stroke volume. right? So this is actually said by our Frank Starling's law. This follows our Frank Starling's law. So that is the importance of end diastolic volume in case of preload. Now end diastolic volume depends on three factors venous return, the atrial pump activity as well as the ventricular compliance. So how does venous return affect our end diastolic volume? See if our venous return increases what will happen? There will be increased ventricular filling which means our end diastolic volume will increase and so there will be an increase in stroke volume. Okay? So an increased venous return will increase the end diastolic volume and therefore increase the stroke volume. So now we have to see what are the factors which in turn increase our venous return. So the first one is known as a skeletal pump. See we know that in our legs we have got veins which have got walls right. And these veins are actually run between our muscles. So whenever there is a muscle contraction this will push the blood towards the heart. Now there won't be any back flow of the blood because of these valves present. So when there is an increased muscle contraction there will be increased flow of blood into the heart which means our venous return will increase. Okay, So there is one mechanism by which our venous return increases that is skeletal pump. Now the next mechanism is a thoracic pump. See during inspiration we know that a thoracic cavity will increase right our diaphragm will go down and the, the volume of a thoracic cavity will increase which means the pressure of the inside the thoracic cavity decreases which will actually suck in more blood through our greater veins. So what will happen here again there will be an increased venous return and thus there will be an increased stroke volume. So this mechanism is, no, is known as a thoracic pump mechanism. Another mechanism is an abdominal pump mechanism. So here what happens is whenever there is a descent of the diaphragm during inspiration there will be an increase in the abdominal pressure also. So here again the blood vessels, blood is pushed to the heart because of this compression or the increased pressure to the abdominal muscles. So thus here again the venous return will increase and diastolic volume will increase and as well as the stroke volume will increase. So that is the third mechanism that is abdominal pump mechanism. So another factor on which the venous return depends is the ECF volume. 
So there are conditions like vomiting and diarrhea in which there will be a decrease in the ECF volume which will in turn lead to decreased venous return and decreased stroke volume and thus lead to decreased cardiac output. On the other hand we have conditions like pregnancy in which there will be an increase in ECF volume which will ultimately lead to an increase in cardiac output. So that is how ECA volume will depend, uh, will uh, decide on the venous return. Next is sympathetic stimulation. So we know that our veins have got a rich supply of sympathetic nerves. So whenever there is a sympathetic stimulation, there will be venoconstriction. And this will in turn cause an increase in the venous return and thereby cause an increase in stroke volume and cardiac output. On the other hand, there can be conditions like we know dilatation in case of decreased sympathetic stimulation which will in turn cause a decrease in cardiac output. So that is how sympathetic stimulation has its effect on the venous return. Next we will see about the atrial pump activity. See normally our, uh, the, atria, the role of atria is much less because most of the ventricles are filled passively during diastole. But in conditions like exercise we know that our diastolic time will, dec will be decreased. right? So in such conditions, this atrial systole will contribute sig significantly for ventricular filling. So that is meant by atrial pump activity. Okay. So the last factor on which our preload depends is our ventricular compliance. See, uh, the ventricles must be normally compliant for proper filling to take place. But in cases like pericardial effusion, cardiac tamponade, the ventricles will not be able to relax completely. So what will happen? The, there will be decrease in the ventricular filling and thus there will be a decrease in the uh, end diastolic volume and thus there will be decreased stroke volume and cardiac output. So thus we have seen the three factors on which our end diastolic volume depends on which are the venous return, atrial pump activity and ventricular compliance. Next we will see about afterload. So in case of heart, the afterload is a peripheral resistance. So we know that afterload is a load that acts on the muscle after the contraction or once the contraction begins. So in case of the heart, it is the peripheral resistance. Now peripheral resistance depends on two factors. One is the vessel diameter and other is the viscosity of the blood. So if the vessel diameter is more, the peripheral resistance will be less. And if the viscosity of the blood is less, the peripheral resistance will be less. Okay. So these are two factors on which our peripheral resistance will depend. Now the third factor on which our stroke volume will depend is our myocardial contractility. The myocardial contractility in turn depends on the ventricular muscle mass. See if the ventricular muscle mass decreases, the cardiac output will decrease significantly. Right? We know in cases of disease conditions, the ventricular wall muscle is less, so the cardiac output will decrease. Another very important factor on which our myocardial contractility depends is the autonomic activity. See, we know that our heart has a rich supply of sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerve fibers. So, these sympathetic system will actually increase our myocardial contractility. Whereas, a parasympathetic system, even though it doesn't have a direct effect, it, it tends to decrease the myocardial contractility. Right? Now, another factor is hormonal factors. See, we know that catecholamines like norepinephrine, epinephrine, they act on the beta 1 receptors and in turn increase the myocardial contractility. And also other hormones like insulin, glucagon, thyroid all tend to increase the myocardial contractility. The next factor on which myocardial contractility depends is the chemical factors. See there are factors that decrease the myocardial contractility like hypercapnia in which there is increased carbon dioxide, hypoxia in which there is decreased oxygen, then acidosis in which there is a decrease in pH, then general anesthetics as well as toxins. All these decrease the myocardial contractility. Whereas there is a factors like xanthines which are present in our caffeine and theophylline, they tend to increase the myocardial contractility. Okay. And finally, there are drugs which increase the myocardial contractility which is clinically very important. And one example of such a drug is digitalis. So we have to know the mechanism of action of digitalis. See, we know that during the relaxation phase of a muscle, the calcium that is used up for the contraction is pumped back by a circa pump. Right? We all know that. Now, this there's another mechanism in the cardiac muscle in which this calcium is pumped out uh, 
in exchange of the sodium via the sodium calcium exchange right and this is in turn powered by a sodium potassium atpase pump okay so the drug digitalis will inhibit the sodium potassium atpase so what will happen see this pump is uh, not is not working so naturally this pump will be affected right which means there will be an increased calcium remaining inside this sarcoplasmic reticle which will in turn increase the myocardial contractility so that is a mechanism of action of digitalis right it will inhibit the sodium potassium atpase pump so these are the factors on which a myocardial contractility depends which are the ventricular muscle mass autonomic activity hormonal factors chemical factors as well as drugs next we have to see the fact that affect the heart rate okay so in general heart rate increases in conditions like decreased activity of the arterial baroreceptors increased activity of atrial stretch receptors during inspiration during emotions like excitement anger or any painful stimuli then hormonal activity like increased thyroid hormones then in cases of fever where there is an increase in temperature hypoxia as well as exercise so these are the factors which increase a heart rate okay next we'll see the factors that decrease the heart rate so heart rate decreases in conditions like increased activity of the arterial baroreceptors then during expiration as well as in cases of emotions like fear and grief and when there's an increased intracranial pressure so these are the factors which decrease so when a question like factors affecting cardiac output is asked you have to first start with the definition uh, write about the normal value and then write the factors that affect the pre stroke volume that is preload afterload and myocardial contractility and then about the factors that affect the heart rate factors that increase as well as decrease the heart rate and then you have to write some applied aspects like for example shock in which the cardiac output is decreased which in turn lead to decreased perfusion of the tissues so i hope this is clear and you know how to approach this question when asked for the exam thank you